Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Historic Artisan event and in today's special 4 for 1 episode we'll be taking a look at four different decks. We've got Green-White Hexproof, Boros Knights, Red-Green Goblins and Black-White Life Gain. First up we'll take a look at the Hexproof deck. The idea here is pretty simple, we've got a bunch of Hexproof creatures. Paradise Druid, if we can give it Vigilance, has Hexproof. We've got Vine Mare and also a difficult to deal with creature in the form of Adanto Vanguard. And then the rest of the deck consists of auras that we can put on these creatures to enhance them. We've got all that glitters giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Angelic Gift draws us a card and gives a creature flying. We've got Sentinel's Mark which is pretty important, especially combined with Paradise Druid to give it vigilance so it can attack and still have hexproof. And then we also have a Bond of Flourishing for some added consistency helping us find the creatures or the enchantments and then some more lifelink in the form of Squire's Devotion, and then the most important aura on Sarah's Wings, giving plus one plus one, flying, vigilance, and lifelink, although it does make the creature legendary, and the on Sarah's Wings is legendary itself, so we can only have one in play at the same time. But uh, once we can combine Vine Mare with on Sarah's Wings, not many decks can uh, deal with that. And then a mana base, nine planes, and nine forests, four blossoming sands, and two Selesnia Guildgate. So that's the deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we don't have a Hexproof creature, but we've got an Aldanto Vanguard instead, which could be good enough, and a Bond of Flourishing for some card selection, so we'll try it. Turn on Fairy Miscreant, so it could be a blue-white flyer type deck, which hopefully doesn't have too much in the way of interaction, so putting on Sarah's Wings on Vanguard should be quite powerful. Alright, Curious Obsession, so I guess it's a mono blue Curious Obsession deck instead. So they can easily have Unsummon, Merfolk Trickster as ways to interact. And of course the dreaded Curious Obsession start, which is so hard to beat. So we've got our Vanguard. Next turn we can maybe suit it up. Fairy Vandal main phase, so it can pick up a counter from the Curious Obsession draw. The hope is still that we can uh, potentially put the Onsara's Wings on the Vanguard. I think I'll main phase the Mark since uh, we could use a lifelink here. And then hope that they don't have something like an Unsummon to mess with our Vanguard. So take five. All right, time to cross our fingers here and go for the Onsara's Wings. Could see a Spell Pierce potentially as interaction, but that resolves. Let's get in there and hit for five. Spectral Sailor, maybe, to chum block. Alright, so points down to 11. They do have a lot of creatures, so they can easily survive a while here just by chumping. But at least the Miscreants, we should be able to hold off now. Favorable wins, alright. Plus one, plus one to all flyers. So we could take quite a beating, but uh, we can hold off the obsessed uh, miscreants, which is what matters. And they're just going to send the Vandal, so I might as well block, because then we gain more life in the process. So we essentially only took one damage. Alright, let's uh, suit up the Vanguard even more. Go for uh, all that glitters, and then we can play the Sentinel's Mark at instant speed, I guess. Not that it really matters. Alright, 
Bone on Chumps. So I could send on those mark to gain more life, or I could bond the flourishing to maybe find more creatures in case they do have bounce spells for the Vanguard. I'll let damage happen for now. And let's bonds. And yeah, I guess I'll take an all the glitters since Paradise Druid doesn't do a whole lot for us. Winged words to draw two. Trigger the Fairy Vandal some more. And they're still gonna send in the Vandal to keep the Curious Obsession alive. Alright. So it doesn't look like my opponent has much interaction. So that bodes well for keeping the Vanguard alive. And then... Um, I guess we'll keep loading it up here. And now they won't be able to sneak in an attack with the Fairy Vandal to keep the obsession. So they're just gonna chump with the Miscreants. And yeah, my opponent explodes. Didn't need a hexproof creature in this matchup, and the Vanguard was good enough to get there. Sweet, on to the next one. Next up we've got Boros Knights as a nice aggressive tribal deck, with Inspiring Veteran as a nice payoff giving other knights we control plus one plus one, and the other payoff comes in the mana base, so we've got four copies of Tournament Grounds, and four copies of Unclaimed Territory naming knight, so we've got a lot of lands that come into play untapped and generate both colors of mana, which also lets us play all these different one drops on turn one, and generally curve out nicely. We've got four bodyguards and four venerable knights as one mana two ones that can hit pretty hard, then a two mana, besides or Inspiring Veteran, we have Knight of Grace as a nice 2-drop, and then we've got a lot of evasive creatures as well, 4 copies of Sky Knight Vanguard, which also generates 1-1 one -one tokens, which also synergize quite nicely with Heraldic Banner, since we can name white, and all those tokens will also get plus 1 plus 0, and then some more evasive creatures in the form of Sky Knight Legionnaire and Arden Veil Tactician. We also have some interaction with Conclave Tribunal, which we can easily convoke thanks to the many cheap creatures in the deck, and then also two copies of Fireborn Knights as another curve topper that also synergizes well with Anthem effects like Heraldic Banner and Inspiring Veteran. And then the mana base consists of eight planes, six mountains, four tournament grounds, and four unclaimed territory, so no tap lands required. That's our deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a decent opening hand. We've got one drop, two drop, three drop, and uh, a functional mana base. Facing a Swiftwater Cliffs. Could be an Izzet control deck, maybe Wizards. Storm Tamer kind of confirms that suspicion. And Veteran was a great pickup. Probably still gonna play the Knight of Grace first. They're likely to have some removal in hand here, otherwise they probably would not have kept a one-lander. So they could easily have shock for the veteran. So I want to try and bait that out first. And there's a shock. But the tactician is a decent blocker here too. And I'm okay offering the trade, because if we can put a plus one counter on Tactician, it's very hard for them to kill it with a single burn spell, since four toughness is kind of the magic number. Opponent does decide to take it, so could see Wizard's Lightning on the Ardenville Tactician. Or a Lightning Strike. Storm Tamer's still gonna play defense, but now we can get around it thanks to the Veteran giving plus one plus one. And I might actually protect Veteran with a Bodyguard instead of playing Knight of Grace. From a flavor perspective, this is pretty nice, the Bodyguard protecting the Veteran. Let's see if in practice it also works out. There's a Pyromancer, which 
does a pretty good job on defense here, all things considered. Fireborn Knight is going to hit pretty hard here. So I guess we don't mind sending in the Venerable Knights. But I'll still keep back the Bodyguard and the Veteran. Third land, so we could see an Autolith here, which is kind of the payoff for playing all those wizards. More likely Lightning Strike plus Shock taking out Inspiring Veteran. Alright, Veteran is indestructible for now. Another Storm Tamer. Oh, nice banner into Knight of Grace. So we'll send the Venerable Knight as well. Sure. And if they trade, I'll probably put the counter on the Fireborn Knight, make it more difficult to kill, and of course play as well with Double Strike. So we've got two different Anthem effects, synergizing with all our creatures. Could use another flying creature perhaps, if the ground ever gets stalled, but uh, they're gonna have trouble dealing with this Fireborn Knight, unless they can find two burn spells. Alright, Shock takes out the Veteran. But we should still have good attacks here, and uh, can even pump our Fireborn Knight if we want to. Don't have the mana to pump it twice. So they're gonna have to chump the Fireborn Knight and probably take three. And I'll play the land since we might be able to pump Fireborn Knight twice with another mana source. Opponent hasn't found their Adelis yet, which is the real payoff for the wizard deck. But once they do, they can do some powerful things. For now it's just a Lava Runner, forced to play defense. Bodyguard for additional insurance. I think if we just protect this Fireborn Knight, we should be in good shape. Opponent down to five, and I struggle to see them coming back. All right, and a Conclave Tribunal should finish things off nicely. And there we go, sweet. Next up we've got the Red Green Goblins, which also features Goblin Matron as one of those anthology cards that was added to Historic. Let's us search our library for any Goblin card and put it into our hand, so it gives us a bit of additional consistency and helps us find those more powerful Goblins. Then looking at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got the Firebrand as some cheap interaction, two Bannerets for some additional Mentor, we've got the Crater Maker which can also take out something from the opponent, we've got the Instigator making two 1-1 one -one Goblins essentially, which uh, plays quite nicely with a few of our different Goblin synergies, we've got the Zurta Goblin which can be a 2 mana 3-3, three -three. then a nice payoff for playing all these Goblins is also Groom Gully, as each non-human that enters the battlefield will enter the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter, so also plays quite well with the tokens from the Instigator. We've got the Goblin Warchief, which is what allows for those very explosive turns, making Goblin spells one cheaper, and also giving them haste, especially if we can put two Goblin Warchiefs in play at the same time, we can do some very powerful things. With cards like Goblin Matron, potentially only costing one mana with double Warchief in play, and letting us search any Goblin out of our deck, 
And then we also have the Goblin Ringleader, which is the big card advantage goblin in the deck for mana for a 2-2 with haste. And when it enters the battlefield, we can reveal the top four cards of our library, put all goblin cards revealed this way into our hand and the rest on the bottom. And every single card in this deck outside of our lands is a goblin, so it can potentially provide quite a bit of card advantage. And then finally, four copies of a Volley Veteran, which is the main removal spell in the deck. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target creature and opponent controls equal to the number of goblins we control, so also play very well with the Goblin Instigator. And then the mana base also gets to take advantage of unclaimed territory naming Goblin. We've got two Rugged Highlands and some additional mana fixing and then seven forests and eleven mountains. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into a game and see what the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw and this hand seems okay. We've got the Instigator to synergize with Groomgully and Veteran if we decide to hold the Instigator until after we play Groomgully. And a Crater Maker on turn two. I added the Crater Maker to the deck once I realized that often I did want to hold the Instigator until after playing a card like Room Bully. We'll give our opponent a little sneak peek here to what's gonna happen. So some sort of Ascent deck. Ooh, nice. The War Chief can do some powerful things for sure. Uh, still gonna Crater Maker first, I think. And then next turn I'll have to decide which 3-drop to lead with. So my opponent probably has some token makers of their own. Do we Groom Gully or do we War Chief? We have Land Force, I think we Groom Gully first. And then next turn I can... go War Chief into Instigator perhaps. Another Sentry. It's also possible I was supposed to... Uh, Crater Maker kill Aspirants to kind of delay their Ascent synergies, but uh, that's fine. Take 8, I guess. And then for now... I think we go War Chief plus Instigator. Make some blockers. Don't think we're attacking yet. But we have a pretty powerful late game here with the ringleader and matron. So don't mind making some trades. Could even trade Grumguli to be honest. Don't really foresee needing Grumguli to win this game. Yeah, that seems fine. Take five. Not a ringleader. So I kind of want a matron for another war chief here, and then next turn we can completely go off. So let's do that. Do have to be careful for like uh, heroic reinforcements from the opponents potentially pumping their team. Like an aspirant. Oh boy, another war chief. So, how about we just play defense this turn with a third war chief? Veteran killing an aspirant. And then I can use Crater Maker to kill the other one. And then. Yeah, my opponent has seen enough, but you can imagine how playing a 1-mana Goblin Ringleader here, finding a bunch more goblins that all cost 3 mana less to cast, would be quite powerful. Sweet, on to the next one. 
And then last but not least we've got the Black White Life Gain deck, which features a card that you might not have seen before, Twin Blade Paladin, 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three that says whenever we gain life put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Paladin, and as long as we have 25 or more life the Paladin has Double Strike. This is a card that was in one of the Planeswalker decks, so the only way to unlock it to my knowledge is just to craft it. Another card is very similar, Gideon's Company, is uh, not going to get Double Strike, but gets twice the number of plus 1 plus 1 counters, so we could easily play that one instead. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got the other typical payoffs for gaining a life, four copies of a Janice Pride Mate as a 2-mana 2-2 two two that gets a plus 1 counter whenever we gain life, and the Bloodthirsty Aerialist as a 3-mana 2-3 two three flyer that also has the same effect. And then we've got plenty of ways to gain life, of course the best one is Soul Warden, 1-mana for a 1-1, one one, that whenever another creature enters the battlefield we gain 1 life, that also includes the opponent's creatures. We've got the Leonin Vanguard as a 1-mana one 1-1 one one that can gain 1 life if we have 3 or more creatures in play, as well as getting plus 1 plus 1. And then Healer's Hawk as a 1-1 one one lifelinker with flying. Then we have Impassioned Orator as a 2-mana two 2-2 two two that gains life whenever we play a creature. We've got Angel of Vitality as a 3-mana 2-2 two two with flying that says whenever we gain life we gain that much life plus 1 instead. So that's a very easy way to get up to 25 or more life, which will give the Angel plus 2 plus 2 as well as giving the Twin Blade Paladin double strike. And finally, four copies of Call to the Feast, making three 1-1 one, one, life-linking vampire tokens, so a great way to trigger Orator and Soul Warden multiple times, as well as making life-linking creatures, so a great way to help us grow Pride Mate, Aerialist, and Twin Blade Paladin. And then looking at the mana base, we're not very well set up to cast the Aerialist on curve with only 12 black sources, but we still want plenty of white to play all these one drops on time. So the mana base is a little bit sketchy, but even if we don't play Aerialist on turn 3, it's still a very powerful card in this deck. So we've got 12 planes, 8 swamps, and the full 4 copies of Scour Barons, which is also great as it gains 1 life when it enters the battlefield, so it's actually quite synergistic in our deck. So that's our final deck here for today, let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with uh, an acceptable hand. We've got the Healer's Hawk as our enabler here. So if the Hawk dies, we might struggle to grow the Paladins, but uh, plenty more enablers in the deck as we're facing a Gitu Lava Runner. Second Lava Runner. And a hit for one. Second Hawk isn't bad. So let's attack and uh, see what happens. Make sure to play the Swamp so we have the option of playing Aerialist if we draw another one. Kill Fiend, alright, that's a scary one. For now we'll just play Angel. And essentially gain 4 life. And then next turn the Twin Blade Paladin can grow up to a 5-5. Five five. Looks like the Angel is gonna die. And we're gonna take 11 damage, that's a lot. This is definitely a situation where Gideon's Company would be better than the Paladin. But we can still potentially get up to 25 life thanks to the Angel Vitality. Maximize Velocity to kill fiends. I'm tempted to take it here. And hope they don't go land into Thud the kill fiend. Alright, Vanguard, so we could either Paladin or Vanguard plus Angel. I think Vanguard plus Angel is better, that way we can gain more life, which I think is kind of the important thing right now. So bank up to 11, 8-8 eight, eight Paladin on defense, Thrill of Possibility discarding another Thrill.
And another maximized velocity. Kiln Fiend on 8-3. Again, I could take it, since we're gonna gain a bunch of life back next turn. Yeah. And then play another Paladin. And I could even consider attacking with the original Paladin now, as it's uh, threatening lethal. I will leave the Vanguard back as an additional blocker. Another thrill of possibility. And a crash through for trample. Now I think I'm okay blocking the kill fiend. Alright, looks like we're in the clear. And my opponent explodes, sweet. This game didn't even feature some of our best life gain enablers, like the uh, Soul Warden. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed these four different decks. Definitely a lot of fun with uh, each one of them, and they're all capable of some pretty broken things. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, happy holidays, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.